It's me, Professor Inventus. I'm here at capital E, and today I've been wondering how you are in your little bubbles. We're going to explore not just little bubbles, but together we're going to look at the biggest bubble of them all. One that surrounds us all the time. But first, I thought I would have a look at talking to my fish. Just a second. This is my fisherman phone. It is a special crafted device that communicates with marine life fish. I've brought with me my pet fish, Myrtle. I've got some questions for Myrtle and together we're going to wonder what it's like to be a fish. Okay, here we go. <coughs> so, so, I will ask a question and Myrtle will respond through the fish in my phone. I've got it around the wrong way, okay. I will ask Myrtle a question and then Myrtle will speak back to me through the fish in my phone which will cleverly translate it into an answer I can understand. Hello Myrtle, can you hear me? It's Professor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you quite clearly. You don't need to yell. Myrtle, uh, how are the flakes been? Uh, you, you enjoy the flakes? They're tropical flavour. Did you really create this communication device to talk about no, food? No, that's fair. <laughs> I wanted to know, uh, you know, what's it like to be a, a fish? What is it like to, to breathe through your ears? Breathe through my ears? <laughs> What's it like to breathe through that mouth and nose? Ugh. Fine, I, I, it's fine, I guess. Uh, what? Well, what's it like to have those little um, those little, those those little flipper fins? What's it like to have fins, Myrtle? Huh. What an odd question. What's it like to have those gangly things you call limbs? It's, it's they get in the way sometimes when you're trying to sleep and uh, and it, but it's okay oh oh I've got one let's ask Myrtle about all this water I mean water's so heavy isn't it have you ever tried to pick up a whole bucket how about we ask Myrtle what it's like okay Myrtle sometimes you go deep down underneath a big thick, heavy ocean of water. Surely that must squash you and squish you. You must feel that pressure pushing on you. What does that feel like? I'd say my water is my home. Hmm. What must it be like to not live in water? Oh. It's got a point, you know. We think that the fish live in a big, deep ocean but in fact, we're quite similar. Us humans live inside a big, deep ocean too. How about we do some experiments to find out what the ocean is made of that we walk around in? It's called an atmosphere. Water, like the water in the sea, is really, really heavy. <laughs> Have you ever tried to lift a whole bucket of water? The sea must weigh so much that no one could lift it. I'm going to show you, using my glass, how the water is always being pulled down to the earth. It's pushing down all the time. That's why waterfalls and rivers are constantly running. What I'm going to try to do though, is block off the top of my glass. This ball is not going to make a good lid for my glass. I can tell. Nothing changes. But I can use it to make a vacuum. I'm going to fill the glass up with water. I'm going to put the ball carefully on the top. And when I tip it, a seal is made. 
The water is pushing really hard to get out of the glass, but the air is pushing just as hard to get in, and there's more air than there is water. If you look really closely, you might be able to see little bubbles of air creeping up along the side of the glass. That's how hard it's pushing. If you imagine a doorway to the bathroom, you're pushing the door to get in, and someone's pushing on the inside, trying to get out, and the door gets stuck in the middle so no one can move. Shall we break the seal? Let's tap it. This part's fun. Whoa. Whoa. Did you see that? The water didn't just rush out of the cup, the air rushed up to get in. It's pushing down hard on us all the time. I used to think that the air around us was all made of the same stuff, but in fact, it's quite different. It's a bit like a soup. It's made of all sorts of different ingredients. I thought there was a good way I could show you one of those interesting ingredients. All right, I'm gonna need this big bucket. Now, have you ever made a baking soda volcano before? Yeah, of course, I have too. We're gonna make a little baking soda volcano in the middle of the bucket using some baking soda and a little bit of vinegar. Ooh. Can you, can you hear that noise? It sounds a little bit like when you breathe out through your mouth and you go shh. That's what I think it sounds like. When you hear this noise, you can tell that the reaction is making gas. It's making air, just like shh, you and I are making gas when we breathe out through our mouth. But this baking soda volcano is a bit too small. I think I'll make a bigger one. Shall I make a bigger one? Okay, maybe, maybe we'll do two. Should we do more? Yeah, more? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna make a really big baking soda vinegar volcano. <laughs> okay, are you ready? All right. Whoa! <gasps> the gas that's being made, you can see it in little bubbles. It's the same gas that we breathe out when we're finished taking in the air. It's called carbon dioxide. An interesting thing about this gas is that it's heavy, a little bit like water. What I've made inside this tub is actually a sort of ocean of carbon dioxide. And if I blow bubbles, I can see it floating in the water. They look like little boats on the sea, don't they? They're lighter than the carbon dioxide, but heavier than the air. This is one way we can separate the different ingredients of the air around us. It's like magic. I am going to try to make a cloud. What I'm gonna need is this bike pump, which pushes air into the tires of my bicycle. The great thing about air is that it's like a sponge. It can be squashed. And we're gonna use the pump to squash lots of air inside the bottle. When the pressure is released, the little droplets that are in the air will be forced to cling to whatever particles are nearby and they will become visible to us as a white cloud. Firstly, I'm gonna to need to put a tiny, tiny droplet 
of alcohol into the bottle. I'm using hand sanitizer. Then I'm gonna hold the bottle in my hands and rub it a little bit so that the liquid turns into gas. This is the same thing that happens to the oceans when the sun lands on them. It's called evaporation. Little bits of water break off and lift up into the sky, but we can't see them until they get stretched as the pressure drops. Now I'm gonna put this cork in the neck of the bottle and I'm gonna increase the pressure, squash it down. Ready? There might be a bit of a pop. Oh. Oh. The air inside the bottle can be seen. This is just one of the many ingredients that are in our air. And we see it every day in the sky. Thanks for joining me, team. We did some great experiments. Remember, when you're out and about and you see the leaves drifting along the ground, the trees dancing in the air, and the clouds drifting by, that your air, your atmosphere, is our ocean. And we have to share it. Together, we only get one. And here it is. I'll see you next time.